Hello, my name is Jon Letty and I'm here at uh, Java One at our voting booth and I'm here with Alexei from Cuba Platform. Hi. Yeah, hi. Yes, I work for Cuba Platform and we highly use Vardin uh, for our development tool and you can find uh, you can find the uh, post about that on your uh, website and uh, we use also Vardin for our client projects and uh, entire client UI, back office UI mainly is built over Vardin. So could you tell a bit about Cuba Platform, what is all about, what can people do with that? Uh, Cuba Platform, uh, it is a high-level framework basically. Uh, it combines a number of mainstream technologies such as, for example, uh, you need to build the application. So you have to have like middle tier, you have to have a database, you have to have a uh, user interface for, for your uh, basically system. And uh, we provide tight integration be between all those three tiers. Uh, so basically with the Cuba platform you start your application and you already have entire like uh, infrastructure to start with and you have number of um, modules that you don't need to develop for your own. Uh, so for example it is security management, uh, you can have like uh, dynamic attributes within the platform already. So all, that, all those generic things are, are already in and uh, that speeds up our application development really fast, uh, really uh, highly and uh, basically we have I would say we have two products the first product is Cuba platform itself which is open source you can go to github download it and use it uh, for your applications and then we have another part which is Cuba Studio. It knows everything about the Cuba platform. It uh, helps you to uh, start an application within minutes. It helps you to uh, create a Vardin user interface or user interface based on Vardin components. It helps you to scaffold, uh, for example, entities, uh, database scripts. So basically, it is, it is mostly a rapid application development tool for Cuba platform. So basically you can uh, drag and drop the UI together and you can have full stack application from the database layer up to the web. Yeah, that's that's correct. That's right. And you don't need to uh, learn like uh, lots of technologies and what it helps a lot in this case. Uh, what we say if you only know Java standard edition, you know GPQL, then yeah, and XML obviously, then you can go ahead and start uh, developing your own uh, application which can also be uh, launched in cluster, can be launched in cloud. Yeah, so all, all that kind of things. It's a high level thing, so basically you don't need to get your uh, hands into the uh, details of technology, but basically you just solve the business problems. So that sounds really interesting. Uh, you told earlier on that you started development of, of Cuba platforms, this brand that is based on Vardin framework in 2009. Could you tell a bit about the story about that? What, what was the reason for using Vardin and wh how has your experience been on, on top of Vardin now for seven years? Yeah, uh, sure. Uh, th that's quite interesting actually question. I worked for another company before I joined Cuba team and uh, I had a dilemma. Uh, I had like uh, about 18 Java developers and uh, the question was what to uh, basically use for user interface for bloody enterprise system that was you know lots of tables lots of like uh, fields and buttons and uh, after some research I decided to not go with JS frameworks because I, I don't I don't basically have experts in JS uh, and but I have Java workers and they're good uh, so I uh, basically stuck with the uh, choice between Vardin and smart GWS uh, GWT sorry and uh, finally uh, we decided to go with Vardin because of the um, because of the uh, nature of it I would say Java nature of it uh, GWT is also Java yeah. Uh, uh, smart GWT is also Java, but uh, what's inside of it? It is smart client, which is JS based, and when you compile uh, compile your application on the uh, on the client side, it's going to be JS, which is uh, in 2008 is was really hard to debug your system, and uh, after a trial, uh, we decided to go with Vardin, and then we developed uh, that system on Vardin and. Then I uh, changed my job to, from, from that oil and gas company to uh, Cuba Platform, joined the Cuba Platform team and uh, was really surprised that they use Vardin as well. And for Cuba Platform it is crucial that uh, when we say you need to know Java, then we say we, you need to know Java. Without you know underwater stones, 
we don't want to lie to our users and with Wadin, yes, we can do that. We can say that's pure Java for you. So basically, developing with Cuba platform, you only need to know Java and nothing else. Uh, yeah, if you can, uh, if you can like uh, count XML as a programming language, then also you need to know XML and uh, GPKL. But I would say yes, if you have experience in any like language. Uh, in C sharp, whatever you can start using Kiba platform because the uh, barrier to entry is really uh, is really low. And uh, by the way, this year we implemented one more feature in the Kiba Studio where you can uh, basically uh, go to the uh, Wadding components market, then uh, just put the link to to the Wadding component we don't support some not generic Wadding components, and uh, Kiba platform gonna scaffold all the classes for you to use uh, other components of Wadin. So it was quite easy. Basically, then you can extend this component using all the Java mechanisms. Mm -hmm. Uh, you can extend those components, you can do pretty much whatever with them. You can uh, have really fine-grained user interface using this, covering uh, uh, your special needs. And with JS things, yes, you can do that, but it's, it's a bit more laborious, uh, a bit like twice. <laughs> That sounds interesting. So you get access to all those 600 plus components in the Vardin directory. Yeah, that way. exactly. And in my uh, GitHub, if you go to my GitHub, there is a uh, there is an example of where we built in uh, what 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 was that? Uh, spin, as I remember, a spin component, or uh, that that's a number when you can basically scroll the mouse and then uh, the number goes up or down. Uh, just for for example, how easy it can be done. And uh, actually, if you have, you know, you know all some basics of the Kiba platform and Wadin, that can be done within, I would say, maybe an hour. So you can get more and more components into your Cuba Wadin components into your Cuba application. Yeah. So uh, now you have been using Wadin framework as a basis for Cuba for many, many years. Could you yeah. tell a bit, bit about that? Uh, what are, have been the, the pain points and what have been the good points in, in Wadin? Uh, good points. That's what I'm saying. Like it's pure Java. I, I understand completely how it works from the very beginning up to the uh, the layer what customer sees, uh, basically uh, your client sees uh, in the browser. And this is the best part. When you understand how it works, then uh, you don't worry that it can be broken. And uh, this, you know, uh, when I completely sure that it's gonna work for me, that's a really for me is uh, you know is a developer. And that's very valuable thing. And uh, the weakest point, basically here, it, it, it can be. It can be. Uh, I can say that it's the weakest point, but at the same time, it's just different approach. Uh, you know, all, everybody in the internet they say that session is quite big. Yes, session is quite big, but then you have this clear separation between uh, client on the web browser and uh, client on the server side. And then you can save your state on the server side, so basically uh, browser client is mainly stateless. So yeah, it, it, user session is big, but then you have lots of benefits with that. So it depends. Uh, if you want to have like applications where they're going to be crowded by users, then use you know other technologies. But for some certain area and for enterprise area, I would say when you have not more than uh, normally you don't have more than 300 users at the same time for for most of the uh, uh, enterprise applications, that's going to be perfect choice. And when you say that session is a bit heavy. It basically means more or less that uh, for a big application, it might be like one me megabyte for a session. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And and the server can easily handle ten thousand of those concurrently. Yeah, exactly, exactly. That's what I'm. Uh, yeah, uh, on the server side, there is no problem. Yeah. So yeah, session. Th this uh, heavy session is a problem just between uh, the tier between like uh, web uh, browser client and server client. But yeah, that's not going to be a problem for, I would say, 90% of the uh, enterprise developers. Because 90% of the, uh, from my experience that I have uh, for the for 15 years of my experience, 14 actually, uh, the uh, most of the systems are not that big. Those are not like for, it's not, uh, you, you don't, you're definitely not going to use Vardin for creating, you know, a fifth generation of social network. That's just not what it was invented for. Exactly, and, and of course, if you need to build a social network, then you 
look technology from a completely different point of view. If you are building for the enterprise, you might be totally happy with having these thousands of users per front end server anyways. Yeah, 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 that, that's basically the point. I mean, uh, you can say that's bad, but yeah, yeah if you develop, um, I don't know, LinkedIn, that's probably bad. Yeah. But if you develop regular application that's gonna do what it should do, so for example, I don't know, uh, automation of taxi industry, we have this software within the company where I work, so Kiba Platform is developed by Holman and all the all our products are based on Kiba Platform. So basically we use our own technology. And uh, yes, the, uh, for example, for, for that purpose, uh, it works perfectly. For a document uh, workflow system, it works, a document management system, it works perfectly. And for other systems, for example, now we uh, just uh, launched with our partners, uh, learning management system for schools is pretty much like ERP, uh, ERP system. For, uh, for, for any school. Basically, you just install the system and it has everything, including dynamic scheduling of, for example, classes and kind of that, that kind of things. So for entire school, it's gonna work fine, yeah. Sounds like really familiar use cases for us as well. So many of our customers are doing exactly the same things. So if you're building for enterprise, you want to have a platform that binds everything from the top web layer to the database, and some tooling around that. Go and check Cuba platform. Yep. Yeah. Thank you very much for the interview. So see you. See you here. Yep. Yeah. Have a nice job. Thank you.